Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to set up two Raspberry Pi Model 3 units that I had at spare to act as a site-to-site -site VPN using WireGuard. One Pi will act as the server and the other as the client. This is ideal for a low traffic VPN or occasional uh, remote access solution. It's cheap, simple way to get remote access to the machines on the other side of your network. I've also added a quick diagram in the next section to explain the layout. The two sites are called Home and Remote for ease of use and the site that acts as the WireGuard server has a static IP address and on the other side it has a dynamic one. Uh, you do need either a static WAN address on your server or to have registered a dynamic DNS name against one of the sides uh, that's acting as the remote site essentially that you want to connect to if you don't have a static address. Without further ado, let's go and have a look at the diagram and get started. So as you can see, here's our network diagram. We have our home on the right and we have our remote on the left. The remote's gonna act as the client and the home is going to act as the server. In this diagram, on the remote side, there's just a modem, just standard NAT modem, and on the home side, there's a firewall and a modem, although it's not illustrated here. I've added static routes to the firewall and to the modem on both sides to route traffic for the respective remote subnets and the WireGuard subnet as well, because the machines that are on the gateways on either side won't know the default address is on the other side and will send the traffic via the default gateway so if it doesn't have a route to access the traffic out over the vpn uh, it won't know where to send it so as a result there's a static uh, route added to both the firewall and the modem on either side so let's go ahead and get started we've just connected to our first pi and what we're going to do here is we're just going to open a shell session and then grab a copy of the pivpn.io script. So we're just gonna we'll get started. So we're gonna curl minus L, HTTPS, install the pivpn.io, the pipe at the bash. That'll just download the script. I'll cut out the various sections here to save some time. Also, remember we're performing this on both the home PI and the remote PI. So I'll only show this once here and I'll add comments uh, just highlighting the change for the remote site uh, to save time. But the process is the same essentially on both. So it'll just now prompt you. I've just highlighted the uh, remote side settings here as well, just for the second PI, these are the IP address and the gateway uh, that you'll be putting in uh, on the remote site. Just to remember to replace these with your own 192.168.1.80 is our local side and our local gateway is 1.1. .1. I'm just gonna press PI here. Okay, so we're gonna select WireGuard as our VPN type. You could also use OpenVPN, but the config is different for that. We're just going to concentrate on WireGuard for today's demonstration. Uh, remember, you're doing this on both boxes, and um, we're going to go ahead now and click OK. And then we'll be prompted to reboot in just a moment. Again, you're doing this on the, the two PIs, not, not just one. On the remote PI side, the install process is the same, but we're just going to set the port used by the installer script to 51.8.30 just so there's no conflict with the settings in the client file we're going to be copying over to the remote PI in the next section. We will be renaming the wg0.conf file on the client end in any case uh, to prevent the server from starting up on the remote side. We only want the client conf to actually start on the remote side and to act as a client. So this is just a section where it asks us about the port. So we're just going to leave it at the default here click OK. You can pick whatever DNS servers you want here. It doesn't really make much difference for the purpose of routing traffic. I've just selected Open DNS. This is the WAN IP address of the home side. Um, this will be whatever your WAN IP address is, is listed here, not the one in the, in the video. And just click OK. It'll now run through the install. Okay, so just to remember that you will need to NAT that port through your firewall to connect from the internet inbound on the home side. So you'll be looking to NAT 51820 
from the WAN to the LAN essentially. I'll cut out sections of this here just to speed things up as well. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do a quick restart. We'll back up again, we'll open our shell, and we'll go ahead and we'll add uh, a client just for the PI on the other side. So that's PI, VPN add, enter a name for the client. We'll create two here, so we'll create client one and just client two for demonstration purposes. And then the same thing again, PI, VPN add, client two. Okay, and that's it. So now let's uh, just type clear here. We'll go ahead and we'll su duo to root and then we'll cd into the etc wireguard directory. In here are our configs, keys and wg0 conf file. So here's our configs here. We'll just have a quick look at our client file that we created in a moment. And that's our wg0.conf file. So by default it roots all traffic. We don't really want that. So we have a look at client one here, we can see our endpoint is our WAN address, but allowed IP is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which is basically everything. We only want the subnets on the remote side. That's our port 51820, and that's the essentially the WAN address we're going to be connecting to. Remember to swap these for your own WAN addresses. Okay, so let's just edit our client one again here, and we'll change those settings. So if we just go down to endpoint, and we we'll paste in our allowed IPs and also a persistent keep alive 25. So this is to ensure that the tunnel is kept alive by persistent and continuous contact um, using this setting here. Otherwise the tunnel will drop and it won't stay up. And again, our allowed IPs reflect the range that we want to uh, route traffic for. Okay, and that's it. Then we just need to SCP that over to our PI remote box. So we've gone ahead and we've copied over our client one file. We're on PI remote here. And again, we've already run through the install of the VPN client. So we're gonna just CD into our WireGuard directory again. We're gonna rename wgconf to wgconf.back. You can see I've just done that here. We really only want our client one conf file in here because that's all we want up. If we just have a quick look at that, you can see it's the same file we added it previously. We've added in our allowed IPs, we've added in our persistent keep alive, and there's the address we're going to connect to and the port we're going to connect to. So we're going to see if we can get our tunnel to come up here. If we do an IF config, you can see there's no work our tunnel up here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a wg hyphen quick up client one which is the interface name for client one conf and you can see the tunnel has come up if we do an if config for to a bar more you can see up the top here client one is there and we have an ip address of 10603 now we should be able to ping 10601 which is the ip address of the server on the other side yeah we can okay perfect so we know that our tunnel is up. Um, we can also try 192.168.1.200, which is the gateway of the firewall on the home side, and we can ping that as well. And we can ping 1.1. So we know our tunnel's up and established. We do wg quick down client one, it'll take the tunnel back down again. Now we do want the tunnel to auto start and be up automatically. So to do that, we need to do a wg hyphen quick at client one um, via SUDO. Okay, that's the end of the video, folks. Please remember to like and subscribe, it helps the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.